How are you doing today, learners? I hope you are doing great. And please accept and prepare yourself for another day of learning opportunities. By the way, I am Mark Medino Tehomi, your science teacher for today. In this video lesson, I'll go over another topic in biochemistry with you. Our lecturer will begin with a short prayer. Please bow your heads and let us pray. Dear Jesus, please show me how to spend this day sharing your love in every way. Help me to be kind to everyone, to play and love and have lots of fun, shining your light and giving your grace, sharing your joy with a smile on my face. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here. Ever this day, be at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. And before we get into our new topic, let's have a look at the objectives of today's topic. At the end of the lesson, students will be able to learn different processes of protein metabolism. Determine the monosaccharides as important contribution in energy metabolism and determine the synthesis of forming of the saccharides in protein metabolism. Before I move on to the new topic, do you still remember our last discussion? If yes, what is all about? Very good! Our last topic is all about lipids metabolism and we learned that dietary lipids are digested in the stomach and small intestine because dietary lipids are hydrophobic they must be emulsified before breakdown as well as acid lipases can digest triacylglycerol or TEG derived from milk lingual lipis and gastric lipis in addition pancreatic enzymes break down choline esters phospholipids and TEG containing LCFAS in the small intestine Furthermore, this includes pancreatic lipids, phospholipids A2, and cholesterol esterase. The small intestines emulsifies the dietary lipids with bile salts, which functions as a detergent. Okay, since you are already known about our last topic, we can now proceed to our next topic. I prepared an activity for you to begin our new lesson. I'm going to show you some pictures and jumbled letters about our new topic. You've been given the duty of arranging those words based on the images. Each right answer has a time limit of 10 seconds. Is it true that everyone got the right answers to our first activity? Congratulations if you answered yes. If not, don't worry, I'll provide you with a variety of exercises to help you learn more about our today's lesson. Metabolism of monosaccharide and disaccharides. Glucose is the most common monosaccharide consumed by humans, and its metabolism has been discussed extensively. However, Two other monosaccharides, fructose and galactose, occur in significant amounts in the diet and make important contributions to energy metabolism. Galactose and fructose metabolism as part of the essential pathways of energy metabolism is shown in Figure 12.1. Fructose metabolism The major source of fructose is the disaccharide sucrose, which when cleaved in the intestine, releases equimolar amounts of fructose and glucose. Fructose is also found as a free monosaccharide in many fruits, 
in honey and in high fructose corn syrup in which 55% of fructose or 45% of glucose typically, which is used to sweeten soft drinks and many foods. Entry of fructose into cells is not insulin dependent and in contrast to glucose, fructose does not promote the secretion of insulin. Phosphorylation of fructose for fructose to enter the pathways of intermediary metabolism, it must first be phosphorylated accomplished by either hexokinase or fructokinase. Hexokinase phosphorylates glucose in most cells of the body and several additional hexoses can serve as substrates for this enzyme. Unless the intracellular concentration of fructose becomes unusually high, the normal presence of saturating concentrations of glucose means that little fructose is converted to fructose 6-phosphate by hexokinase. Fructokinase provides the primary mechanism for fructose phosphorylation. Phosphorylation products of fructose and their cleavage is shown in figure 12.2. Cleavage of fructose 1-phosphate. Fructose 1-phosphate is not phosphorylated to fructose 1,6-phosphate as is fructose 6-phosphate but is cleaved by aldolase B also called fructose 1-phosphate aldolase to dihydroxyacetone phosphate or DHAP and glycer aldehyde. DHAP can directly enter glycolysis or gluconeogenesis whereas glycer aldehyde can be metabolized by a number of pathways as illustrated in figure 12.3. Kinetics of fructose metabolism. The rate fructose metabolism is more rapid than that of glucose because the trices formed from fructose 1-phosphate bypass phosphofructokinase 1, the major rate limiting step in glycolysis. Disorders of fructose metabolism. A deficiency of one of the key enzymes required for the entry of fructose into intermediary metabolic pathways can result in either a benign condition as a result of fructokinase deficiency or a severe disturbance of liver and kidney metabolism as a result of aldolase B deficiency or hereditary fructose intolerance, HFI, which is estimated to occur in 1 is to 20,000 live births. Summary of fructose metabolism is shown in Figure 12.3. The decreased availability of hepatic ATP affects gluconeogenesis, causing hypoglycemia with vomiting, and protein synthesis, causing a decrease in blood clotting factors and other essential proteins. Kidney function may also be affected. In some states, HFI is part of the newborn screening panel. With HFI, sucrose and sorbitol or sugar alcohol, as well as fructose, must be removed from the diet to prevent liver failure and possible death. Individuals with HFI displace an aversion to sweets and consequently have an absence of dental caries. Conversion of mannose to fructose 6-phosphate Mannose, the C2 epimer of fructose, is an important component of glycoproteins. Hexokinase phosphorylates mannose, reducing mannose 6-phosphate, which in turn is reversibly isomerized to fructose 6-phosphate by phosphomannose isomerase. Conversion of glucose to fructose via sorbitol. Most sugars are rapidly phosphorylated following their entry into cells. An alternate mechanism for metabolizing a monosaccharide is to convert it to a polyol or sugar alcohol by the reduction of an aldehyde group, thereby producing an additional hydroxyl group. Synthesis of sorbitol. Aldolase reductase reduces glucose producing sorbitol. This enzyme is found in many tissues including the lens, retina, Schwann cells of peripheral nerves, liver, kidney, placenta, red blood cells, and in cells of the ovaries and seminal vesicles. In cells of the liver, ovaries, and seminal vesicles, there is a second enzyme, sorbitol dehydrogenase, which can oxidize the sorbitol to produce fructose. The pathway from sorbitol to fructose in the liver provides a mechanism by which any available sorbitol is converted into a substrate that can enter glycolysis or gluconeogenesis. The effect of hyperglycemia on sorbitol metabolism Elevated intracellular glucose concentration and an adequate supply of NADPH cause aldose reductase to produce a significant increase in the amount of sorbitol, which cannot pass efficiently 
through cell membranes and therefore remains trapped inside the cell. This is exacerbated when sorbitol dehydrogenase is low or absent. For example, in retina, lens, kidney, and nerve cells. As a result, sorbitol accumulates in these cells, causing strong osmotic effect and therefore cell swelling as a result of water retention. Galactose metabolism The major dietary source of galactose is lactose, obtained from milk and milk products. Some galactose can also be obtained by lysosomal degradation of complex carbohydrates such as glycoproteins and glycolipids, which are important membrane components. Like fructose, the entry of galactose is not insulin dependent. Phosphorylation of galactose. Like fructose, galactose must be phosphorylated before it can be further metabolized. Most tissues have a specific enzyme for this purpose. Galactokinase, which produces galactose 1-phosphate as with other kinase, ATP, is the phosphate donor. Formation of UDP galactose. Galactose 1-phosphate cannot enter the glycolytic pathway unless it is first converted to UDP galactose. This occurs in an exchange reaction in which UDP glucose reacts with galactose 1-phosphate producing UDP galactose and glucose 1-phosphate. The enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase or GAL. Use of UDP galactose as a carbon source for glycolysis or glyconeogenesis. For UDP galactose to enter the mainstream glucose metabolism, it must be converted to its C4 epimer. UDP glucose by UDP hexose for epimerase. This new UDP glucose can then participate in many biosynthetic reactions, as well as being used in the GALT reaction. Role of UDP galactose in biosynthetic reactions UDP galactose can serve as the donor of galactose units in a number of synthetic pathways, including synthesis of lactose, glycoproteins, glycolipids, and glycosaminoglycans. Disorders of Galactose Metabolism Gold is deficient in individuals with classic galactosemia. In this disorder, galactose 1-phosphate and therefore galactose accumulate in cells. The accumulated galactose is shunted into side pathways, such as that of galactitol production. This reaction is catalyzed by aldose reductase. This is the same enzyme that converts glucose to sorbitol. Lactose synthesis Lactose is a disaccharide that consists of a molecule of galactose attached by a linkage to a glucose. Lactose, known as the milk sugar, is produced by mammary glands of most mammals. Therefore, milk and other dairy products are the dietary sources of lactose. Lactose is synthesized in the Golgi lactose synthase, which transfers galactose from UDP galactose to glucose, releasing UDP. This enzyme is composed of two proteins, A and B, 